Are you a Facebook addict? We continue our conversation this morning. Namdi Godson Oswagu, I've been messing his name up all day, has written a book, Facebook Addiction. So then we're going to say Namdi's here. Hi. Oh, <laughs> We've been talking about the whole Facebook thing. We talked about people who lie. Uh, a lot of people are not very honest you on, be, on their Facebook. You could become anyone you want online. Wow. Anybody. Like I, I specialize in, in creating that as a, for my, you know, as my consulting business. But yeah, so people, especially with social media, gives you the opportunity to create these profiles and put, you know, cool things that you're doing. I, I think going to the vending machine or skydiving, which one sounds better? <laughs> skydiving. <Okay. laughs> now there are people who actually have to get help because they're just addicted. Well, the book is fictional, but. Ironically, after the book, I've been mm -hmm. coming in contact with uh, mental health professionals that do treat Facebook addicts. There's also a program in um, Washington area that is called Restart, and they uh, they have it's, it's a clinic, like a 45 day clinic, and you can admit yourself. What about politicians or celebrities who get in trouble? Like some people put things on their Facebook that they shouldn't. Now I do know that a lot of times things that you post online can come back to haunt you. Yes, they can. So you must be very, very careful about what you put. I think we've seen countless cases in the news about you know things like that because you figure we're in a society that what you're thinking now you can broadcast it. <laughs> so what if you're thinking like really it could be racial thoughts, it could be issues like against women, it could be whatever you're thinking. You put that out there. But it's not now. It's not about your small group of friends seeing that. It's about it in the entire world, possibly. So and future employees. Exactly. What about if you're really into your church? Yeah. <laughs> you put stuff. What I just think you just have to be very, very careful about I, about what you about what you put on in pictures that you post. I, I think you should be. I mean, we you see cases of you know women. Um, putting things that are scantily clad, and you know, it looks, it might be cool when you're in college, but when you're, you know, 24 and, and you're working somewhere now, yeah, those could come back to haunt you. Do you think it's fair when employees or employers, you yeah. know, try to search you out, find out more about you, uh, I, look at your Facebook pages? It's so funny because I, it was a, it was an interview with one of the heads at Google, and, and his advice was saying, well, don't do anything wrong, and you won't have to worry about it, but. Yeah. <laughs> People, what happens is this, it, it, employees are making an investment on you, right? So mm -hmm. they want to search with by any means necessary to find out as much as they can. So with social media and your information and then them going through it, it gives them the ability now to, to do that. My advice, adjust your privacy settings. Don't make sure the things that you don't want public are not or take them down. Because if, it's a tool and people are going to use these tools to get to the desired goal. Wow. There are so many addictions. Do you think that things like Facebook help people who suffer from loneliness? I think it's a, I think it's a fine line. Right? Okay. Because you can be lonely and then you can you can accumulate hundreds of friends. But if you have to move now, are those online friends really going <laughs> to be there to help you? Yeah.